praise the Lord, Jesus is Lord. You know, God loves everybody so much so that he loves to restore when we lose or when we are lost. Restoration, the whole essence of salvation is restoration. This is Pastor Henry Madawa coming to you from Kiev, Ukraine. God is the great restore. This is the title of my message today. It doesn't matter what you've lost. Maybe you've lost yourself. You lost your sense of humor. You lost your joy, you lost your family. Or your family is still intact, but you lost the relationship. You lost your business, your job. Maybe your walk with God is not as it's supposed to be, but God can restore you because he's the great restore. Restoration is what God does. It's important that we place ourselves so that he can restore us. Actually, let's listen to the message. You will receive much more because God has so much to convey to you through this message. Let's listen. God is our restorer. When we walk in our daily life, we, as humans, we can lose many things. The interesting thing is that we may lose something and not even notice it. When we lose something, sometimes we find out that we have lost years after that loss because we get used to the new state after losing something. And we are used to the state and didn't notice we lost something. 2 Kings chapter 6 verses 1 through 7. And the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See now the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered, Go. Then one said, Please consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water, and he cried out and said, Alas, Master, for it was borrowed. So the man of God said, where did it fall? And he showed him the place, so he cut off a stick and threw it in there, and he made the iron float. Therefore he said, pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand and took it. This man lost an iron axe head. Please note, they are prophets, but they lost an axe head, which was the main tool to reach their goal. It is very frustrating when you do something and the main tool is lost. Secondly, they lost the axe head while they were busy with important work. Uh, the right work, permitted work, and blessed work. The prophet of God agreed with them and still they lost an accent in this process. So if you are busy with God's work, it doesn't mean you are protected from losing anything. Moreover, I found out that the devil especially loves to steal important things from your life because of your employment in godly affairs. Especially, he can steal when you are tired. In the process of life, when we lose the most important thing, our life ends. So, what I do like is that God is able and willing to restore the lost. The Bible says in Luke 19 verse 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. The word lost also means perished. One of the most important functions of the Lord Jesus 
is not only to save, but to seek and to find. Because some are hiding and they need to be found. We need to tell them, listen, you need some help. And they may reply, no, I don't need any help. No, you need to come here. Please note that for Jesus, it is his work and function. And that's the reason why he came. It is his mission. Say amen. The question is, what we may lose in life? Number one. We may lose our relationship with God. Please know that if you lose your relationship with God, it happens in a short while. Not in a while, but in a short while. There is something that may happen in a while that takes 10 to 15 years, but someone lost their relationship with God, then in a short while, everything else is being lost as well as because God is the one who helps us to keep what we have in our life. How is it expressed? Number one, the close communication with God you've had before is lost. You can't hear His voice anymore. It's not that these people heard the voice every time, but at a certain level, some way God gave them clarity and tips if they were asked did God tell you they would answer yes how did he tell you and they would probably not will not be able to explain to you because sometimes they can't explain it to you but they could understand that it was from God but when it's lost the sensitivity towards God is lost all the time in prayer is lost and the word is lost and Giving is lost. Activity in the church is lost. Zeal towards the house is lost. Secondly, sometimes we may lose our relationship with people. Some people may lose their relationship with their family. They may lose their relationship with their husbands, wives, family, friends, pastors, and many important people in their lives. Thirdly, we may lose not only people, but some lose their version in life. Why I live, they may lose it. They lose where am I going to. And finally, who am I? When a person loses his vision, why he lives, his life becomes dull. Number four. People lose not only their vision, but also material possession. Money, houses, apartments, cars, jobs, businesses, health, clothes, and many other things. Number five. Sometimes we may also lose, especially when we lost, we lose relationship with God, lose people, possession, and many other things. Then finally, we can lose ourselves. But the most joyful thing in all of this is that God is the restorer. The question arises, Pastor Henry, how do we lose it? Because when we understand how we lost it, it helps us to realize the method of restoration. Number one, the primary method, the devil doesn't produce anything new, but he always copies what God does, perverts it, and does the opposite. When God wants to promote and bless you, to do something good in your life, God always brings a person into your life. But when the devil wants to destroy you, when he wants to steal something from you, the devil doesn't invent anything new, but he also brings a person into your life. Bad people from the devil are not able to stick to our life unless, number one, in the moment when I have a fallen state inside. 
when I had a resentment, wounds, bitterness, dissatisfaction, feeling of revenge, unforgiveness, unbelief, compromises, and many similar things. The devil may attach his people to us when we have such feelings inside. When I don't have those feelings, I will not accept those people. The second reason we may lose something is the lack of knowledge, correct understanding, and depth of knowledge. When a person doesn't have enough knowledge or correct understanding, because he may know some facts, but doesn't know how to interpret or apply those or he knows how to do it but he the depth of his understanding is limited such a person can be easily used or it is easy to steal from him do you know what it says in the gospel of matthew chapter 13 verses 4 through 7 and as he sowed some seeds fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured them some fell on the stony places where they did not have much earth and they immediately sprang up but when the sun was up they were scorched and because they had no root they withered away and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up and choked them jesus explains it from verse 19 of luke 13 when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. The absence of knowledge and understanding or the depth of knowledge can make you easy prey to take it away from you. And the third way how we can lose something is blindness. Blindness may happen because of pain. The pain can make a person blind and he cannot see. If you know a lot, you are a smart person and understand a lot, how can the devil make you ineffective? He makes you blind so that you couldn't see. Even if you have everything, then the most important thing for the devil is so you couldn't see. To bring the loss back, anything you lost in life, it says in the book of Revelation chapter 2 verses 4 and 5, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first work, or else I'll will come to you quickly and remove your lapstand from its place unless you repent. Number one, we need to notice that it is important to remember to bring the lost back. I like what God said. He didn't say you lost your first love, but he said you have left it. Many things that we say we lost, but in fact, we just left it. To remember means we need to remember or to list what did I lose in life. What is it? It means that we need to understand and to agree that something is missing. If we do not remember and do not come back and do not see that we need it, we'll not be able to bring it back. Number two, if we want to bring it back, we need to come to God because He is our source. Say, God is our source. He is our restorer. Matthew chapter 1, verses 1, 5, and 6, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Wow. It is an essential list. Look at what it says. Salmon begotten Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz begotten Obed by Ruth, Obed begotten Jez, and Jez begotten David the king. David the king begotten Salmon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. I like this list so much. There is one person on this list called Rahab or Rahab, Rahab. She is almost as important as Mary the Virgin. 
She is among the queens, among all the important women in the history of humanity. And when everything is over, she'll be standing together with them all. But she didn't become so great immediately. How did she become a great person? I want you to understand it. Joshua chapter 2 verses 1, 4 and 9. And now Joshua the son of Nun sent out two men from Acacia Grove to spy secretly saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. So they went, they came to a house of a harlot named Rahab and lodged there. Then the woman took the two men and hid them. So she said, Yes, the men came to me. But I did not know where they were from. In fact, she was telling lies, but that's, uh, that is her lifestyle. Verse 9. And said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, she read it from the Bible, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. So this lady, the harlot, started saying, Your God is with you. So when your God will give you this city, promise to me that you will not kill me and my family. Rehab uh, is a great woman, but at first we see her, she was lost. She lost herself, the version of her life, and that's why she became a harlot. Not because she is such a person by her nature, not by her nature she is a completely different person, but her nature is she is a good and steady woman, but she lost herself so much that the devil was able to bring a substitute into her life with a purpose of bringing her to hell. But she was lucky because anointed men of God came to her house, two men. She decided to take a chance and she thought, I won't let them leave my house just so, but today I transfer from being a lost woman into a found one. She made that decision. So if you want to restore what was lost, this lady was not a harlot inside, she was a great woman, but when she lost herself, she became a harlot, and the atmosphere she got made her become a harlot. In turn, it made people expect it from her, and she probably didn't expect anything better for herself. And suddenly, God came to her through these people, find God. He is the source of your restoration. In Him, there is a solution to everything. It is in Him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, God is the restorer of everything. In fact, the Bible says He even wants to restore our, us to become younger. Our youth is restored every day. His mercy is restored every morning. God loves restoring. And when you see a miracle, what is a miracle? It's nothing but total restoration of a body part or something in life. When somebody's eye is blind and it's restored, it's healed, it's the restoration of their sight. I want you to watch some of these testimonies, how God worked miracles and you'll see how God can restore what has been lost and expect your restoration today by the power of God because He loves you. Let's watch these testimonies. He knows the emptiness of your heart. And tonight, He has come to rescue you, to help you, to heal you, to deliver you. Receive from Jesus. No pain. 
name. Jesus loves the wrestlers. Ludmilla had a floating kidney that caused her constant pain. But after the prayer, she has no pain at all. Where did you have this pain? In your lower back. Because of the floating kidney, right? But today I prayed for it. I put my hand right there after your words, and then I forgot about that pain because I'm used to it. But I noticed that now I can spin and move my body and I have no pain. Praise God. Can you move, please? Praise God. Hallelujah. Look how happy she is. This is what the Lord has done. Lord bless her. Vasily had bronchial asthma for three and a half years. Today, during the prayer, he began to breathe freely. You had bronchial asthma for three and a half years. Yes. And what happened today? Today I began to breathe really well, just like in those years when I was healthy. Can you breathe now? One more time. One more time. Give God the glory for this miracle, Lord. We thank you. How long did you have this bronchial asthma? For three and a half years. For six years? Three and a half years. Praise God. Praise be to God. Give glory to God one more time. What happened here? Tatiana had problems with her musculoskeletal system from the time she was 10. She couldn't move without pain, but after the prayer, the pain completely disappeared. And now you can move without pain. Now I can stand. And now you can stand. Yes. But before it was painful to do so. Yes. From what time it happened? From about the time when I was 10. It was difficult for me even to hold my child in my arms. But now after the prayer, when I took my child in my arms, I was surprised. Where's your child? Over there. Bring her here, please. Praise God. Is this your mother? Please come to your mother. Mama, please take your daughter. Praise God. Give God all the glory. Lord, I thank you for this miracle in Jesus' name. Tatiana, during seven years, had suffered from degenerative disc disease. She couldn't lift her right arm, but now after the prayer, the pain is completely gone and she can put her hand up. The pain is completely gone. Could you please raise your right arm? How long you couldn't do it? For seven years. For seven years. Right. Also, I had to help my handicapped husband. Are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm right-handed. You know, when she is right-handed and her right arm didn't work properly, and then her hand is healed. It's a big deal. Lord, we thank you for this miracle in Jesus' name. And praise the Lord. Go to the end of the earth and preach the gospel. This is the call of the Lord Jesus which remains unchanged. Starting in 2003, Christ for All Cities Ministries expands the boundaries and wins new territories for the Kingdom of God, preaching the gospel in the countries of Asia, Africa, and Europe. Jesus Festival is a place where each one can come and get his or her miracle from God, a place where thousands of people, when hearing the good news, get saved, healed, and restored. We thank every partner of Christ for All Cities Ministries and each person who made a one-time donation for the Jesus Festival organization. If you are not a partner of Christ for All Cities Ministries yet, we invite you to participate in God's work. Well, praise the Lord. You know, I love seeing miracles. That's the restoring power of God. Many times I watch couples walking in our church. Then I remember this couple was divorced and God restored them. 
you see a father and mother with their son, grown-up son. Then I remember this son was a runaway and God restored him. I love to see when God brings restoration. So the biggest restoration is the restoration between God and man. That's why Jesus died. So you can be restored to God. So your sins can be forgiven. So you can become a child of God. So when you say to Jesus, be my Lord and Savior, you are not fulfilling some religious, doctrinal, dogmatic thing. No, you are being restored to the Father, to God, your Creator. If you say, Pastor Henry, I've never been restored to God. I've never been saved. I've never repented of my sins. Let's do that right away because God loves you and he awaits you. If you want to receive the forgiveness of your sins, say with me, Heavenly Father, forgive me of all my sins. Give me a new life. Wash me and cleanse me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, congratulations. If you pray this prayer sincerely, your sins are forgiven and you are a child of God. Now I want to pray for you, for the great restoration to happen in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that you are the great restorer. You restore our lives. You restore your mercies every day. So I pray in the name of Jesus for the restoration of everybody who's watching or listening or hearing my voice. The restoration of their body through the healing power of God. Be healed in Jesus' name. I pray for the restoration of their family. I pray for the restoration of their relationship with their children, husband and wife, restoration of their businesses, restoration of their work, education, whatever you are, whatever area you need restoration, I say receive it in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Well, God bless you. What a wonderful day. I love it. Don't worry. Everything that COVID-19 is telling in your life, it shall be restored sevenfold. God bless you. We love you. Stay strong and stay with Jesus.